Hello and welcome to a 21st Century Film Club. Today we're talking about Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, now on Netflix, which has just won the Oscar for Best Animated Film. How, how did you feel about the film, Jamie? I absolutely love this film and I think it was completely deserving of its Oscar. I think um, when I first watched the first few minutes of the film, I was a bit unsure about the animation style because personally I found it quite jarring, yeah. the kind of stick-like style they did with it. But I yeah. think as the film went on, I actually thought the animation style was brilliant, realistic, just wholesome. Yeah. I'm kind of sick of this very bright, zany cartoon characters all the time with animation. And I think this film, in my opinion, is the opposite of that, those materialistic Disney films, which are all about princesses yeah. now and really things looking beautiful and pretty. But um, I, I would say the film's not perfect but I, I, I would thoroughly recommend this to anyone, especially as a film to watch on a Sunday, yeah. like with all the family. I think it is a film that has a lot of heart and a lot of message too. Yeah. So I kind of disagree. I could like see where you're coming from. I thought the animation style was a bit creepy, if I'm being honest, <laughs> just my personal taste. It was very, very well done and like very magical, and kind of Tim Burton-esque. But for me, that's not really my style, um, especially because I'm not sure it really matched the content. But um, also, so I'm not sure I'd sit down with my family and watch it because I, I, I feel like I couldn't work, quite work out who, what the demographic was of who it was for. I think it was something that I struggled with with the film. But it, overall, it was, like a, it was a very well animated and acted film. It was just not necessarily my cup of tea personally. Yeah, um, for me personally, I think stop motion is like really, the way it can be done is really well done. I think the way it was done in this film was really like beautiful in parts. Um, I agree with you. I, I think the way this version of Pinocchio was done, I, I wasn't quite sure like which genre or wait, which which audience it was aimed for. Like, I don't know. If it was like a kids' film or an adults' film. Um, I reckon a child over ten would probably enjoy it. But the themes it explores are quite dark. It's like it explores like fascism and like grief and death, and it's just really dark at times. But at the same time, I don't think it really fully commits to like the dark themes or the adult uh, themes are uh, enough to really warrant it mm. being like an adult film. Um, but I enjoyed it. I, I wouldn't say like it's the best film I've ever seen ever, Like, but it, it was okay. Um, I wouldn't want, want to watch it again, but it, it was okay, it was okay. I think just for me, after years of very weak animated feature films which have won Oscars because they've really faced no competition, I think this film personally would pretty much win every single year. Unless it was against something iconic like 1991's Beauty and the Beast, you know, a Disney film so great or a Studio Ghibli film so so great. And those films have kind of, in my opinion, gone a bit downhill just yeah. to be very nitpicky recently. So in the heyday against their prime, I think this film would have competed against it. I think it is because it's not Disney and Pixar, but I think for me, this is a film where if it is for children, you have to watch it with your children and not just leave it on their own and be like, oh yeah, I this really is what you can- I really struggled watching this about what the demographic, because yeah. I didn't, as an adult, I didn't feel like it was something I would watch because I was like, it feels very childish. Mm -hmm. It feels like a cartoon. But then obviously I would never show that to a child under the age of 13. Well, maybe, but like there was, there were like Nazi saluting. There was loads of like fascist themes. There was lots of um, historical things. I don't know if a child would understand quite mm -hmm. to an extent that they should be doing. Because mm -hmm. like, you don't just want a child to be watching that and imitating things. So mm -hmm. it's, I, I, I really struggled with it because it's not an adult film. At least I didn't enjoy it as an adult film. Maybe some mm -hmm. people would, um, but I wouldn't show it to a child. So I was really struggling mm -hmm. with who it was for. I think maybe it was targeted towards adults, but Mm -hmm. It was a bit too childish for my liking. It's, I agree. It's definitely supposed to be a film that parents will actually enjoy to see, mm. not just a film that parents have to see because their children want to see it. I think it's very much like The Boy in Striped Pajamas mm. in a film that, in my opinion, it's so important to show children it. But it is a film that, for children, because of the way The Boy in Striped Pajamas was structured, the book as well, mm. from a point of view of the child, I think this took a similar approach at um, Pinocchio was against war yeah. because uh, Giappato told him so and other things, but it didn't mm. really go too much into why war would be so catastrophic for millions dying and other things, but it just showed that war is about loss, it's about grief, it's about mm. the mother who sends her son Candlewick away, you I know, to that little camp, uh, yeah. not, which wasn't a proper military Yeah, sending I feel like with war. things like the boy in the striped pajamas though, that is done very seriously. Like mm -hmm. it is obviously from a child's perspective, so 
but in a way that's more haunting because you're like oh my gosh this mm -hmm. child thinks it's all fun thinks it's all games and because it's I maybe because it's real life actors and not animated I don't know what it was for me but I almost feel like this version of Pinocchio wasn't conveying those horrible things seriously and like I understand that sometimes to teach children things you have to have some sort of humour we've all seen horror histories and things mm -hmm. like that but when it comes to things like very sensitive issues like the Second World War and Mussolini and things like that I almost thought they were like making it too comical and I was actually sometimes I was just a bit like oh maybe mm -hmm. this is just me being very like politically correct but I was mm -hmm. just like it just feels a little bit like they're very much glazing over the subject and I know that's the whole point because it was meant to be like underlying themes for the adult mm -hmm. but it was definitely noticeable enough that a child would notice that mm -hmm. but not understand it whereas Boy in the Striped Pajamas is very hard hitting for both parent and child or mm -hmm. like a uh, teenager because it explains those themes in a very serious scary but also like some light like, relief way I think it's a very different line. I agree with you. I think they probably could have done without, without just cutting it out. Uh, maybe show the first um, 10 minutes where the bomb drawer in First World War kills um, Gestapo or Gestapo's child, Carlo. Uh, Carlo, yeah, yeah. Carlo. Um, in the church. Maybe show that bit. But other than that, I don't think you really needed to include like, really serious topics. Mm -hmm. um, and they include it, but I like, just they leave it really open they don't really explain or maybe that. like those bits serious like yeah. the whole film could be a comedy yeah, yeah. but make those bits a little bit more serious like things like Born in Striped Pajamas has some light relief of like the kids being like childish and stuff but then even though that is also kind of hard hitting but then the serious bits are serious I feel like it's a weird mix of both for me I think it showed a lot of themes about like the hypocrisy of the church with the crucifix in the very beginning that it did actually go a bit deeper than you might think with Italian society being the reason why it might perhaps lean into fascism and populism is because of the deference to the church. And I actually think with the community and Pinocchio being ostracized because he is a wooden figure that was very symbolic of many groups of people who are different and not, not the way. Catholic way. So the priest was like demon, everyone was pointing at him as a demon and other things because he was different. And to me, I thought that was kind of quite clearly symbolic of Jewish, other ethnicities, g gay people, the disabled, all the people that didn't fit into the ideal youth. And I think they really were good at contrasting Candlewick and Pinocchio. Mm -hmm. And Candlewick was pushed and groomed into being the perfect boy by his father and by society, Italian society. Whilst Pinocchio, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a huge wooden nose. He is made of wood. He is weird you know he's not going to be and i think for children in that way to me what fascism a huge component of fascism is about how you look how you appear to others being judged which is why you know the disabled were so persecuted and targeted so for me to have that contrast of pinocchio being and i think that's kind of a reason why unlike disney's version and I've not actually watched the, Disney's, the, the original. original set in the same time period. I'm, I, not, I'm not sure it was. I think it was, but if it was, it, well, it wasn't really meant. They really didn't draw it. It was this version really drawn on it. I think it was a wartime. I think the original yeah. was this about wartime. Really I it? think because it was released in the 1940s, mm. the audience itself were living through war. Yeah. So they didn't really actually have to make it about war about because war. everything was about war. I was going to say then. when I saw, I've seen the really old Disney yeah, one. Yeah. And I can't, obviously I was a child when I watched mm -hmm. it, but I can't remember it being quite as war-centred as this no. one. So it was a different take, and I know what you mean, like it was quite interesting how they managed to link Pinocchio's tale, like the fairy story, mm -hmm. you all know, to sort of yeah, underlying themes of like um, those who were ostracised and the war and outsiders and I stuff. I think one of the best lines in the film is when P uh, Pinocchio is like, well, they like praise this statue of Jesus Christ, and yet they see him, he's like the demon, it's like, yeah. like this like, this figure and it's like a really interesting line how they go into that theme of like well mm. like we're all the same I would, yeah exactly I completely agree with both of you that I think the film's weakness was it tried to put too much in mm. of whether it's singing as well as the comedy Don't get me started <laughs> as well as as well as the fascist <laughs> elements as well as the religious elements yeah. so to me I think overall it was so much to choose from yeah. that it would take a while to digest but it's I couldn't get my head around the singing I was like right is this an adult? This is mm. also why I couldn't find, work out if it was an adult or a child's mm -hmm. film because w there was just like random bits of musical in it. I was just like, oh, please, mm. this is so annoying. This is just my taste. Mm. But I was like, we're just getting somewhere, having a hard hitting comment. <laughs> and now we're having like, I'm a boy. And, like, oh, please. and it wasn't even very good. <laughs> I was just well, like, I can't. That's, that was kind of a point. It was like, 
the whole animation sounds so rustic. And mm. they're like, we're going to make the singing bad and rustic too. And it was like, mm, it's but an odd thing. But we do have to watch that. Like, yeah. Have, yeah. I know everything's like metaphorical. That, we're trying yeah, to make yeah. sure, as it a viewer work. on a baseline level, it was quite painful. It didn't for work. Me. It, they're trying to be naturalistic. Yeah. I think that was their attempt. But I don't like musicals or anything, no, so this is don't. just me being very critical. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hate that. Song. And I don't think many, if it is for adults, then how many adults really like 12 year old boys mm. singing, you know, in yeah. a film for so much of it? Or Ewan McGregor, who didn't sound much better than a 12 year old oh, boy, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to move on, Bruce fans. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I could have done without singing as well. Um, one of the songs I thought was quite good, I can't... Um, You're having a little, little dance I, I was, I was, I was, I was going away, so I was like buffing away there. Um, <laughs> I was having a good time. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree, Like it didn't really suit this, this film. Um, mm. or if you're going to do the singing route, and, and then, then fully commit to that route. But again, it was just very confused. Yeah. Um, and very, again, it was like they're, they're trying to do many different things, but didn't really nail any of it mm. in particular. <sighs> I do think they some people loved it. So. No, I actually think they, they nailed this film, and I think this is a film I actually want to see again. Maybe not straight away, but maybe in a, a year or two years from now, mm. just to actually understand it more and see the hidden elements. Because I think the film it just bombards you from the first five minutes when his son dies, yeah. which is why. But many in the past, Bambi died pretty early on yeah. in the film. I think maybe children Still were tougher. Over the heart rate. Were tougher back then, <laughs> and I think in films now and uh, up you got uh, up as well yeah. like the devastating mm. yeah. first 15 minutes of the film but i think that's kind of what makes a great kind of yeah. film in that way and that then they see the light and the healing it's and very classic again. of like cartoons Disney. Yeah. and disney to have that like i'm trying to think there's not too many i mean there must be hundreds mm -hmm. but like, i can't think of any famous uh, real life uh, acting films that are have that quite the same way but a lot yeah. of like bambi sort of dumbo has a bit of a sad bit at the start like they all have like what happened um, mm. in Pinocchio as well, similar themes. Mm. Uh, I think it, it did work. Um, it's just not my sort of film, but I do think like the way in which they portrayed it was other than the comical element in some aspects, but it was good. It was never escapist. It was always social realist. So yeah. when they went to the, what do you call it, the festival and the carnival, and it was all, it was supposed to kind of be a chance of a film to be lighter mm. and to have lots of colour and sounds and cacophony and all that, yeah. which is a word they use <laughs> quite a bit in that film. Mm -hmm. But um, it didn't, it just kind of went for the very much, we are, carnivals often exploit people, like the outsiders are weirdos in society, mm -hmm. who back then people would pay to see, you know, in that Victorian style. I think they're just sticking to the original plot though, because that did actually happen in yeah, the fairy Yeah, exactly. Tale. So I think they had to, they like drew away from the original like fairy tale at some mm. points because they wanted to make social commentary. It is, but I think mm. the, the, the carnival bit was, they couldn't have really done it without mm. it because that is mm. the main plot of Pinocchio, mm. pretty much. But I think if it was more of a style of Fantasia and other mm. Disney films, then it would have been, they still could have had the social commentary, but they could have awed us with the beauty and the escapism of basically, that's what kind of animation films do a lot is they, they bombard you of sound and classical music playing in the background and the colours and kind of a watercolour-esque look to it. But this, it was, I really liked it that it was just social commentary instead of, escapism for once mm. as me i think i've this is a film i wouldn't want all films to be like this but as a one-off yeah no i agree i think that was really well done i kind of wish they went a bit dark with it I know, which, is, mm. which is just me going back to it uh i used to have the tim burton style i kind of wish if they were going for that style or that with the dark things i kind of wish they'd commit to it and mm. just go full they fully do it yeah absolutely because like i think um that kind of animation kind of works like tim burton does it so well mm. uh, with like the court Bride as well um and yeah, I think this was a film where they could have done it. I think it was calling out just not scary, just cool. Well, yeah. yeah, it was a strange yeah. one. I, th I agree. Like I'm trying to describe it, and I think it was just a strange one in terms of the animation style, in terms of the themes they included. And I, I, I did enjoy aspects of that, and I really did think it was very well done in some aspects. However, in some bits of it, I was a bit like either yeah, commit to one theme and make it really like Tim Burton y. Are kind of scary or make it for children or and i just think i struggled watching it and it was actually very conscious in the front of my mind when i was watching it like who is this for yeah. and I, I i often don't watch films and think that while i'm watching it mm. um yeah it's it was odd when he got shot pinocchio it kind of got run over as well and for a, a children's film for the main character to keep dying graphically it is something that maybe it would shock a lot of parents but i think the message in the film about death and time 
really being constructs and that we, I found actually quite moving and I actually took quite great solace in it that if you had someone who has died in your life you can think that they will always live on like Pinocchio outside of time and we saw the underworld as well I think that was almost the strength of a film as you said with a Tim Burton yeah was they had a little bit of the dark side of the underworld like the people playing cards yeah. making it a bit less Christian and more mm. pagan and I quite liked that but as you said I think they maybe could have gone a bit further with that I think one thing that I really enjoyed or not really enjoyed but just I think something they did quite well was the way they portrayed death in the film like I know it's quite dark but um towards the end when they sort of like uh, they try and push the point of like death happens to all of us but it's up to us to try and seize the moment and try and seize every day. Um, and the way they, they explored many, um, many variations of death um, was quite interesting. And I don't think I've, I've ever seen that in like a kid's film or children's film as much. Um, but again, I, I don't know if a child would enjoy it. I don't. I, again, I don't know whether it was aimed at children. Yeah. So I wouldn't necessarily call that a kid's film per se. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I, I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, the, the themes of death and loss, I think, were really interesting and very sensitively done. I think that obviously we had some bits where he was got, got run over and stuff quite violently. But I feel like that was more like trying to be funny. Um, but I think like all the bit about uh, Carlo dying and then uh, all the other family members at the end dying, I think that was quite nicely done and it, I agree with you that that was a main theme throughout the film. Um, yeah. and a, a theme that kept coming up again and again was obedience yes. and that is kind of a child version of fascism like you need to obey what someone tells you to just mm. because they're an authority figure. Don't question authority, don't develop critical thinking, be brainwashed, be a sheep and I think they did that very well in my opinion the obedience and it was about little boys obeying their fathers but actually if your father is a fascist sympathizer then that's the issue kind of with society and the messages we send to children so it was a, it was so interesting to think about very very deeply that a lot of ch children films really say don't question authority be a good person don't be spoiled kind of more, more virtues like be a good person but this film was almost saying well, it doesn't really matter if Pinocchio is a bit naughty. It's more the parents' responsibility in society but to be good parents. It's, I can't. I kind of think uh, Pinocchio is kind of a way to go against fascism and I'll, um, go against the Italian society at the time um, in the interwar years mm -hmm. and uh, Mussolini. And I think uh, Pinocchio and it was the end of the film. It's like, well, we go against that. We like we don't want to do what, yeah. what these rules tell us to do. Uh, the most important things are looking after yourself and for your family and for the community. And it doesn't matter who comes into power. You just have to keep going, even if you're invaded, even if things keep happening. And there's so many modern equivalents today of people who know that it is wrong when there's populist and despot leaders out there who are all about war, money, aggression, which this film was also against. But, um, I, but I, I completely agree, it wasn't perfectly executed. It just wasn't perfectly yeah. executed. But I think, I think it was it's a ambitious. Very brave, exactly, yeah. I think it's yeah. a very brave thing to do. Mm -hmm. To think, okay, let's take an original fairy tale that shows a few of these themes, but isn't really about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And let's really like hammer in the social commentary, hammer in what's like, what we think is a really important message. And I, I think that's a very brave and ambitious thing to do. I just think, I think it's probably worthy of the Oscar, just in terms of the animation as well, yeah. but um, of what they were trying to get across. However, I don't think it was perfect in any manner. I think mm. I really liked it. I was like, oh yeah, the obedience, I get it. Like it links to the fascism. They're singing, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I was just yeah. like, oh God, that's all. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. For me it was, so, and maybe that's what they were trying to convey. Maybe the director was trying yeah. to think, or the animators were trying to think, okay, let's try and make this as like, jarring as possible. Because then you really think about it and you think about why that's happening. Mm. But for me, it was a step too far. I was yeah. like, I can't get my head For me, it. It, similar to this was the gruff voice of. David Bradley, who plays um, Filch in Harry Potter, uh, being the father, Gepato. That was really good, but I hated personally Hugh McGregor's voice. Oh, really? As just something that was so, it just took me out of the moment. 
because it felt like I was in train spotting <laughs> all these <laughs> other films. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's, it's going to go thing, like that, some heroin. That's the thing about it. It's similar. I would not be a child it's, still. It's similar to lots of war films. Is I don't actually want to see a celebrity in a war film. Mm. I kind of want to see unknown actors who look like they could be from that era. But Ewan McGregor, I just felt like Hollywood is here all of a sudden. And it was such an anti Hollywood kind of animation, it, animated film. But it was, but I felt like he was like the comic relief in that film. Like, mm. And his, his portrayal of Jimmy Cricket or. I forgot the name of his character. Sebastian, it, I yeah. Thought it was strange. Yeah. Um, I thought it was good. Um, I'm, I, I've got a soft spot for him in general, like, <laughs> like his film, so... I do too, but I don't know, not in this. That's fair, that's mm. fair. But um, yeah, I thought um, his portrayal of it was really good, and I thought his voice was good, uh, mm. good, good as well in the film. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I think all, all uh, cartoons need comedic relief. Well, not even cartoons, like, mm. you even see it in Shakespeare, like, all plays and yeah. films and stuff have always had, like, that just mm. like character yeah. um i also live under a rock and i know obviously i've seen a lot of stuff with you mcgregor but i didn't recognize his <laughs> no, voice it just literally yeah. the worst thing ever and then i looked at it afterwards i was like oh gosh i see well, how do i not recognize <laughs> it so for me i didn't have that but I was happy. yeah no i think it is important to have the the, the wry humor but, but yeah. with dark humor i don't think it worked you know they, yeah. they tried to get a bit of like gallows humor in there with dying is quite funny and you know the underworld is quite funny but i think they and the, the interesting scene about humour was when they were making fun of the colonel and yeah, fascism. Yeah, like Mussolini and, and stuff. And I was like, oh, it okay, wasn't that funny. Mussolini's here. I, did, I didn't know if it <laughs> was supposed to be funny, though. I was a bit confused at that scene. Because yeah. I felt like that we were supposed to find it a bit funny, but I just was hmm. definitely kind of serious watching yeah, it. Yeah, maybe I've just been, maybe I'm just being over, over cautious with things like that. But no, it didn't. It's just quite a lot. It, I think because it, it just is a confusing film and it doesn't let up at all with the grief of the social mm. commentary or any of the themes so it, it it is an animated film that pushes the limits because many other films released today by netflix would just have a music montage halfway through the film mm. as a bit of a breather but this is you know, you know it's i always agree pushing i it. think overall like to just to sum it up i think really really ambitious mm -hmm. very well animated if even though i found the style a bit creepy but like i know lots of people really love that mm -hmm. style of animation um some bits of it were really hard hitting, lots of social commentary. But for me overall, I was confused by the demographic and it wasn't my cup of tea, like the singing and the comic humor of some very serious topics personally. But overall, I think it was definitely worthy of the Oscar. Yeah. I think Pinocchio himself, I actually hated him at first with his super long legs and you know, creepy. he's like, he was that really was so creepy. creepy. But again, I thought that was so smart of them to be like, why are we judging? If there was someone in real life who had very, very long limbs or a disability, yeah. we can't judge. No, no we I really know you wouldn't. I know, really I wouldn't. It's just the way you, I would imagine seeing and a wooden boy. But and, yeah, I, you would. and I actually think it is a good thing to talk about disabilities and how people look is we're so quick to judge someone who mm. is aesthetically not very pleasing at first to look at. But mm. I feel like the more we look at people, the more it seems to their humanity. So I did, I did appreciate how Pinocchio never got a glam makeover like I believe in the original one where he just become a real flesh mm. and bone boy, boy on the beach but I think in this one it was better that he he, he Pinocchio just knew him he looked the same he looked yeah. the same in he didn't like turn perfect he didn't turn good he has a soul anyway yeah you don't need to look human to have a soul I think that's that's one of the good things about stop motion is that it sort of brings out it's, like, it's not perfect it's, it's like kind of why it works like the art style is kind of janky I like, not not like this film was janky at all like maybe the water scenes were a bit janky but I thought like the way they did it it kind of felt very clunky but perfectly clunky mm. like, yeah. it was very nice to look at and yeah <laughs> like, overall I thought the film was good but I agree with a lot what, a lot what you said Harry like, it's just not really that great at all it was, mm. it was okay it was okay mm.